Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? No, you got to guess. Uh, my dog is drinking water. Close, but no cigar. All right. I mean, I mean, I don't want to stop you from having a cigar if you really want to, because I get a free country. <laughs> and if you want to have a cigar, you can have a cigar. I'm not stopping you from having a cigar. It's just that, Bunny, I have bad asthma. Bunny. I have, like, really bad asthma. I carry a little inhaler. Yeah. An inhaler that I can use most of the time. So, you know, if you want to smoke cigars in front of me, that's your right as an American. I can't stop you. There's no law against that. But just so you know, Bunny, you'll probably kill me, Bunny. You will kill me with your voluminous dark cloud of death smoke, Bunny. Why? <laughs> Why do you want me dead, Bunny? You are a murderer. You are killing me. <laughs> Anyway, it's homework time once again on the old Popon Film Podcast. What the <coughs> fuck was that? I don't know why. Uh, you tell me. You're the murderer, buddy. <sighs> you're the murderer. Bringing your cigars around, trying to choke me to death with your voluminous clouds of death smoke. Uh -huh. That's you. That's on you. That's not me. People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your meme browsing and kindly pay attention. Uh, meme browsing was given to me by Bella, just to let you know. Uh -huh. Each week, the dreaded Council of Ambers descends from their shiny silver floating citadel in the sky and chooses a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. <laughs> a homework assignment that has been fortified, ratified, and notarized with the express intent of bettering society, nay, all calm, rational, good-hearted people everywhere. Huh? But not you, Omarosa. <laughs> Fuck you, Omarosa. God damn right. She wasn't just fired. She wasn't just fired from the White House. She was uh, uh, allegedly dragged kicking and screaming out of the White House. Was she fired? Um, She says she wasn't fired. Then the press says that she was fired. Then people within the White House says that she wasn't just fired, that literally they had to get security guards to drag her out of the White House. <laughs> okay. The story is that, um, like General Kelly said, you need out of the White House. Uh, you're done. We're letting you go. And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then General Kelly said, no, you got to get out of here. And then she started throwing um, curse words. And then General Kelly started throwing curse words back. And then she may or may not have uh, broken something and demanded to go speak to the president directly. And that's when the the like Secret Service and security guards stopped her and dragged her ass kicking and screaming out of the White House. Okay. Which is sad because that means that she's been let go from her job as the executive director of liaisons for the Department of Made Up Job Titles. Uh huh. I, I, like I literally, think, I didn't think she would ever get fired because she's so wrong like for the job, and that's what Trump British wants. Name? Yeah, James Corden specifically just recently, like a week or two ago, had a new segment on his show called. Uh, what is Omarosa's job? And it literally was just him being silent for like a good minute. Yeah. It's time to play. What is Omarosa's job? And then like the rest of it was just. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And then just silence for a really long time. And then. This has been. What is Omarosa's job? So basically, the United States is the laughing stock of the world now. Like, oh, literally, a child lecturer ran for Senate and narrowly lost. <laughs> the child molester lost by only a point and a half. Uh huh. Basically, America is now the Florida of the planet. Yes. 
Exactly. That's ridiculous. The way that we look on Florida, everyone now looks on us. (laughs) And speaking of disgrace, that brings us full circle to this week's homework assignment. A 42-minute legitimate television special that I swear, if it was just a little bit longer, it would have been the main course with its own episode, because that's how amazing this thing is. On account of how amazing the special is, the 2002 animated Christmas special, The Rap City Street Kids Believe in Santa! Yes. Why? I don't know. But yes. I love this bunny. Oh my god, this was rough. I love this so much. (laughs) I was going to record audio commentary with it. I was going to record audio commentary with like the whole family, but then I'm like, I I need to watch it first. I need to watch it once. And then Bella's like, I'll watch it with you. And she laid down on the floor next to me and we watched it. Uh, uh, we waited until the last second. We watched it like this afternoon, and about fifteen or twenty minutes into it, Bella developed a huge headache that was the result of this being so bad. <laughs> and she was literally just, yeah, she got a migraine from this special, which is how bad it was. And she's literally just laying there on the floor, going, "My head hurts. How much longer?" And I'm like, "Sorry, we're only halfway done." How long has this been on? It's only been on for like 19 minutes. I hate this. <laughs> Personally, I think it's all worth it for the amazing grandma character, but I, I, I am apparently a minority in that. It, coincidentally, so is the grandma, so it works. Uh-huh. Okay. Basically, this TV special is the Star Wars holiday special of animated holiday TV specials. And there's a crazy story behind its creation. A, just like the Star Wars holiday special, it only aired once and it would never air it again. Uh-huh. Unlike Star Wars holiday special, it only played on a few stations. It didn't even play on like, you know, the Star Wars holiday special played on every CBS station. This played on select uh, UPN stations. UPN or WB. But yeah, they select. So the the stations could decide whether or not they played this. So let's talk about the creation of this special. It's the 1970s. And one of the biggest bands at the time were the Bay City Rollers. My Lord. Which is a pretty American sounding name for apparently a Scottish pop band from Edinburgh. Were they Scottish? All I know is they sucked. Um, I, it, according to their Wikipedia page. Uh-huh. They, and there would not be any like lies or anything like that there. The band, which at one time was called the biggest name since the Beatles, owed a lot of their success to the managing director of Bay City Rollers Limited, uh, Mr. Colin Slater. Uh, it, now... <laughs> It's important to say that all of this stuff about Colin Slater comes from the mouth of Colin Slater. So take everything I'm saying here with a grain of salt. So allegedly, uh, the Bay City Rollers managing director of, he ran Bay City Rollers Limited. And he made a lot of money with that fat 70s Bay City Rollers money. He went into music producing and TV producing. He allegedly threw a ton of money at a lot of TV shows and TV specials, so much so that he was even allegedly inducted into the Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences. Apparently, Colin Slater is a big deal. The confusing part is that, like, on his LinkedIn and on his professional descriptions of himself he says that he's responsible for over uh 2000 different tv shows and a number of different musical acts and that he won a grammy and that he's a, a he's been inducted in the academy of television arts and sciences but when you go to his imdb page it only lists two things he's ever done uh-huh okay. an animated 
an animated special called Dinosaur Island, and of course, the Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa, Ooh. which is such a horrible name because Rhapsody is spelled in a name that it should never be spelled. There is no street. There's a cul-de-sac, and you don't even get to see Santa. No, and, and but and I'm, I'm getting for something that they are trying to make sound so urban. There's only one black kid kid in this yeah. hood. Yeah, yeah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So there, so there's some real sketchiness to the story of Colin Slater. But anyway, Colin Slater is allegedly a big deal. So much so that in the beginning of this decade, Colin Slater is all, you know, what's going to be the future of cartoons? This whole computer animation thing. So he creates an animated studio called Wolf Tracer Studios. And he he touts it as like the the cutting, the leading uh creator of cutting edge computer animated Stop. uh works. And he has some yeah, on the Wolf Tracer website, he has some examples of some of his works, you know? Uh-huh. So he is soon hired to uh, create the animation for a special, but how is he going to get some big names involved? He needs some big names. Well, allegedly, oof, allegedly, according to the podcast Cartoon Lampoon, as well as the founder of the Lost Media Wiki, which is a website dedicated to finding old lost movies and TV shows, according to them, they did most of the work here. Allegedly, I would not Colin, be taking credit for that. Yeah. Oh, hell no. Apparently, Colin Slater is either he is a solid Scientologist or he knows Scientologists. But anyway, Colin Slater is crazy, sketchy, and shady. And so he allegedly used his connections in Scientology to get huge names lined up to agree to be in Wolf Tracer's first animated special. You look at this special and it is horrible. It is beyond bad. The quality is just the worst. It is horrible. So let's go through some of the names of the people who worked on this special. These are all the people who, who were voice actors. Okay? Okay. Mark Mark fucking Hamill. Really? Mark Hamill was one of the voice actors for this. Well, you know, his career wasn't doing very much, and he was a voice actor. So, yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess it makes some kind of sense. Yeah. Uh, noted Scientologist Nancy Cartwright. Okay. And uh, and the blonde girl bully, who's a horrible person, is voiced by the woman who did the voice of Belle in Beauty and the Beast. For shit's sake! Oh man. Half a million dollars went into this special. Whitney Houston even allegedly recorded a soundtrack that has never been found. And uh, Wolf Tracer Studios was so, so certain that they had a hit on their hands that they planned a sequel that was going to be about Easter. But this only aired once on a few WB channels, and then that was it. In fact, the only proof of this special's existence were n numerous amounts of message board posts from 2002 about how horrible this was. <laughs> this film was quickly forgotten by everyone. The only record of this special's existence were, you know, a handful yeah, of yeah. message board posts yeah. talking about, did you see that special last night? I think it was called the Rhapsody Street Kids. Believe in Santa. Man, that was horrible. <laughs> now, Pacha, come over here and do it, because you do a good grandma. No. no, you you do. You do it so much better than I do. Please, for the okay. podcast. For the podcast. For the band? <laughs> for, the, for the band? For the band. For the band. For the band. No. Come on. You were just doing it, though, <laughs> in the background. <laughs> now you got to do it in the front ground. <laughs> Suck on my beautiful. Where's the baby? We don't have a baby. I want you to stop this foolishness about a baby. <laughs> we found her. We found her. 
I don't want to do it. No, but you do it so good. I don't do a good grandma. You don't. I don't. Steve doesn't do it very well. Yeah. Can I not have the phone directly in my okay. face? Okay, there. Now it's on your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was my best. Yeah, it wasn't your best, but still, it's, it's better impression. than mine. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, I'm sure they overdid it on the voice filter. Because, like, the, nobody the crazy, talks like that. The crazy I, part. I always go. <laughs> Bunny. <laughs> The crazy part is, is that the daughter of the man who, uh, one of the men who produced this, the daughter has a copy of the script. She had lines. Yeah. It was, it was Wolf Tracer Studios who, for for whatever reason, decided to make her voice sound like that. (laughs) That was a studio choice, apparently. A very horrible studio choice. Yeah, but Jesus, this special is fucking bad. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. Uh, Bella hated it. I did. She, she, she was very Not upset. She was very upset at me for watching it. Natasha ended up watching the majority of it. And I told Steve that I hated him because he made me watch it. Yeah. That would hold up in court. Yeah, yeah. what? I divorced him on basis of he made me watch this. Christmas. It, it would come under cruel what? and unusual. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, spousal abuse? Mm-hmm. Well, honey. Hey, I told you to put your clothes in the dryer. Why haven't you done that yet? FYI, honey. Not now, but eventually. Bunny and I. I will have to do their second animated special about I'm dinosaurs. They got I'm to not do saying another one. Do the dinosaur. Uh, they did. It yeah, looked, I was subjected to some of that too. Wolf Tracer did a second special about dinosaurs. Okay, Belly, you can put your phone there. And I'm just putting that in my back pocket for later. We're not watching it now. But <laughs> this special resurfaced in 2015. Thanks to the Lost Media Wiki, which is dedicated to finding specials. And apparently Colin Slater has a a Twitter account and has a YouTube account. And his Twitter account is just nonsense. He just retweets and likes a bunch of random things. Yeah. And and he's constantly bragging about his views on YouTube. But then you go to his YouTube page, and a lot of it is just really tiny bizarre weird nonsensical videos but then oh look it's got 2704 views and 38 likes that's totally real and not a bot (laughs) so the lost media wiki contacted colin slater and said hey can you get me a copy of your long lost special the rhapsody street kids believe in santa and colin slater's answer was i have a copy but it's only in this uh beta type format that's only used for tv stations i can convert it for you but that'll be 150 dollars so if you want this special you need to pay me $150 so I can convert it. And so the Lost Media Wiki said, okay, I I will agree to that. Yes, $150. So then like a, like a week later, Colin Slater uh, allegedly gets back to him and is all like, yeah, well, the people who I got to convert it accidentally made two, so you owe me 150 times two. You owe me $300 now. Okay. So at this, it's at this point in time that the Lost Media Wiki is like, okay, that's kind of sketchy, but here's the three hundred dollars. And then Colin Slater stopped answering them. All right, nice. And uh, stopped stopped sending emails, stopped responding to them. Period. So 
uh, in anger, the Lost Media Wiki found the other special, Dinosaur Island, put that on their YouTube page, and sort of got a bunch of people to demand that that they finally give them a copy. And after months of fighting about it, finally Colin Slater said, okay, fine, here's your copy, and gave it to the Lost Media Wiki, and they immediately put it on YouTube. And it's been watched a bunch of times. There are now grandma memes. We watched a video of a... Uh, um, uh, Mariah Carey singing a Christmas song, but every time she says Christmas, it's the grandma from the Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa saying Christmas. <laughs> really great because it's just Christmas. The snow's coming down. Christmas. We're walking around. It's really great. There's a lot of grandma memes out there. Yeah, she I, I she love was it. downright frightening. Nobody moved correctly. The animation was was so fucking bad. Their their faces were weird looking. Like, yeah, did they get anything right? Anything at all here? Yeah, um, yes, they did. What about the scene at the end credits that set up the sequel? Where suddenly yes. you see, my name is Nick Fury. My name is Nick Fury, head of Shield. I've come to talk to Grandma about being a part of the Avengers Initiative. Seriously? <laughs> uh, I rinsed it out. Uh, it, it's it's better than it was before. Trust me, it was like dripping and stuff. I I, I rinsed. It, I tried to get as much out as I could. No, you didn't. You should wash it out before it. Okay. We can't read this like this anymore. No, it's fucking gross. I want to identify. God damn it, I was in the middle of a joke, and now, like, I don't want to go back. No, you're not. When I first saw this special, the first thing that that ran through my mind was, is this a Sims movie? Did someone make like a like a forty two minute animated special using Sims One technology? But that would have looked better than this. I, it definitely looks like they used something like some shit they found online, a web page or something, or or the Sims or Second Life or or fucking Minecraft would have been better. Yeah, uh, allegedly Colin Slater animated the entire thing just using some home animation software he had on his computer at home. Yeah. Allegedly. Uh, he has so, some real shit. <laughs> yeah, even for 2002, there's this was pretty horrible. Yeah. But oh my god, I love this special so much. <laughs> And what? Oh, uh, Smitty! I wanted to smack the hell out of that kid. Everybody! I wanted to just smack everybody. Which one was Smitty? Smitty. That was the kid who had the scarf around his face and oh, and um, loved his sandwich. And loved his sandwich. Yeah, yeah wanted to fuck his sandwich. <laughs> Now that I think about it, most of the time Eleanor speaks like the grandma from the Rhapsody Street Kids believe in Santa. She just as if they were out here at Christmas. That's Eleanor. <laughs> Eleanor is the grandma from the Rhapsody Street Kids believe in Santa. And it's not even a street, it's a cul-de-sac. There's no street in this. It's no. I was there a car? Anywhere? I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, because that's part of what really makes a street. Yeah. I'm sorry that I didn't wash my hands all And then there's the and then there's the scene. Uh, the teacher just hates her job and wants it every one day. Wants yeah. like eventually, this teacher is going to like take out all of her students and just start yeah! shooting. Yeah. But then there's a scene where, like, one of the kids, like, throws something at one of the girls. Oh, tell him to get away from me! Yeah, and then the teacher's like, 
That means he likes you. That means he likes you. <laughs> he just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. That's a, that's a fucked up shit. Damn. Uh, welcome, students, to the Harvey Weinstein School of Education. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I just got an Amber alert. Uh oh. Amber, be alerted. Why are you alerting us, Amber? So that's it. I don't have anything more for this special. <laughs> the Bay City Rollers, Scientology, Luke Skywalker. The crazy thing is, is that this special aired on TV in 2002. And yet, two years later, Mark Hamill again worked with Wolf Tracer for their second special, Dinosaur Island. I So, like, it really, bad it mark. really gets bad, you. Bad, bad mark. It must have been the cocaine. It really gets you to thinking, like, damn, was it that bad for you before Disney bought the Star Wars? Was it that bad? Because <laughs> that, not just to do this special, but then to do it again. Yeah. Like, god damn, Mark. I am so happy that they're making Star Wars movies now. Jesus Christ. Keep you you earned this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you earned this. Have fun on the red carpet. God damn, you earned this, Mark. <laughs> Jesus. God damn. Anyway, that is it for homework this week. And I legitimately and honestly hope so. <laughs> on jittest mentally, Lee. Yeah. We really do hope that your heart that your hearts, minds, and engrams placed there by the Grand Overlord Zenu. I hope that they have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you can get out of here that easily, bucko. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for, for next week, we're going to try and go a bit of a different route here. I have found a massive, lengthy article, probably too lengthy, a timeline of the history, the lengthy, detailed history of the animatronic band from Chuck E. Cheese restaurants. <laughs> Yay! It's from Vice Magazine, and it's an article entitled, quote, A History of Chuck E. Cheese's anima Animatronic Band. This is an article explaining the lengthy, detailed history of the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band. Because Chuck E. Cheese are slowly but surely removing the audio animatronic bands from all of their restaurants. Yes, they are. So, an era is ending, basically, <laughs> and it's sad. America, you know what? Personally, I think that getting rid of the uh, audio animatronic bands at Chuck E. Cheese violates the culture of human rights and human decency. I think it must. And I, I, I'm kind of happy with myself that, that, uh, that this is happening and I have never been in a Chuck E. Cheese. Oh my God. Um, by getting rid of the audio animatronic bands, Chuck E. Cheese is defending the culture of disrespect that would see our human rights marginalized. In America. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm going to send them a letter. An email. I'm going to shoot him an email. But that's next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about Chuck E. Cheese, Showbiz Pizza, The Rock of Fire Explosion Show, and Five Nights at Freddy's. I personally believe it's my theory that the reason why they're getting rid of the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band, they'll tell you that it's for cost reasons. They'll tell you that because it's not popular. They'll tell you that it's, it's a sign of the times, but it I think if Chuck E. Cheese is really going to be honest with people, they're getting rid of the audio animatronic band because now everyone sees the audio animatronic band at Chuck E. Cheese and thinks they're going to come to life and kill me. And that's all the fault of those goddamn Five Nights at Freddy's games. Yes. yes! I think it's Five Nights at Freddy's that killed the oh, Chuck E. Cheese animatronic band. Yeah. 
we went for Jaden's birthday and everyone was like, oh my God, that's so scary. And it wasn't just like the people in my family. You could see a, a like a bunch of people at the Chuck E. Cheese that were kind of like scared and sketchy with the audio animatronic band. That's all <laughs> that stupid game's fault. That game killed Chuck E. Cheese. So we're going to be talking about this next week. So join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. Just to make... Just to make sure I'm on the right thing, this is entitled Chuck E. Cheese's Creepy Robot Band is Breaking Up? No, no, no. I've got, I, I've got the article. I bookmarked it. So let me... I can pull it up right now. It's it's from motherboard.vice.com, and it's entitled... A History of Chuck E. Cheese's Animatronic Band. I'm sending it to you okay. uh, in about 30 seconds. So My that phone just, is very that, slow. That just makes me think that that Vice is really taking this seriously. Oh, yeah. This is a ridiculously detailed look at the history of this band. Uh, of the creation of the animatronics and a history of the Chuck E. Cheese Corporation and how the band came to be and the changes over the years and literally the person who invented the band, what he's doing now. It's it's a detailed history, probably too detailed. So, yeah, they definitely take this way seriouser than they should. Yeah. 